Hello and welcome to Calvary Christian Fellowship's Wednesday Bible Study as we are continuing to study the book of Revelation. We do hope uh, that you will watch this video and also if you have any questions during this uh, message, we'd encourage you to put them in our comment section or to send us a direct message and we'll do our very best to answer your questions in one of our upcoming studies. Also, if you have any prayer requests or praise reports, feel free to use the information which is on the screen to reach out to us and let us know that we may include you in our daily time of prayer over the needs that come in, as well as rejoice in the great things the Lord is doing in our midst. Uh, God is doing great things, and we hope to be a part of hearing some more miracles of praise. Another thing, if you are enjoying our uh, Bible studies, we want to encourage you to like our Facebook page, as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we do put our content on various social media platforms, but you can find our messages on Facebook and on YouTube, and we would very greatly appreciate your support in subscribing to those things to receive the latest updates. If you'd like to be a blessing to Calvary Christian Fellowship with your tithes or your offerings of support, you may mail them to Calvary Christian Fellowship, P.O. Box 25544, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46825. And God bless you for continuing to support our ministry. And finally, we do want to invite you to come and worship with us this and every Sunday at 10 a.m. We meet at the Community Center in downtown Fort Wayne. The address is 233 West Main Street, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46802. Restrictions have been lifted, but we still are uh, providing opportunities if those want to be social distanced. Uh, but we're grateful that we're reopening and seeing more of you coming back to church, and we hope to see you this Sunday as we worship our great God. Honey Tree is away, uh, but we're grateful Pastor Phil's here, and he's going to continue our study. Dad, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, son. I'm glad you shared that Honey Tree's not with us today, and uh, we know that we've been blessed with a lot of people that are Honey Tree supporters and blessed by her ministry yes. through what we've done. And we want to encourage the people because what we're excited about for her, and it's kind of mixed emotions. What's that old line, what mixed emotions are? Uh, matter of fact, I don't think I'll even use that for, for getting in trouble and getting a lot of maybe hate mail with what I would say about That's the definition. That's P.O. Box, too. <laughs> but our mixed emotion is the excitement of doors that are now with COVID's restriction lifting. Yes. Uh, that Honey Tree's able to, to get back on the road again and uh, doors of ministry are opening up for her. But that means that we're gonna be missing her here at Calvary Christian Fellowship and the blessing during the COVID that she has uh, been to our congregation and what to our blessing. team here. Yes. Um, but we're, you and Brother Ben and I are going to be the three stooges and try to keep <laughs> everything continuing on with the Word of God in the book of Revelation, and we're going to get right into that now. Good. Uh, we're going to be looking in Revelation chapter 18, and as we shared the last time that we were together, <coughs> chapters 17 and 18 go together because we're looking at what's referred to as Babylon. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> we're not doing it as a typical study that maybe a lot of prophecy teachers would normally do, but we're going to be approaching it with what I believe most Bible teachers are consistent with. And that is these are two separate Bab Babylons that are being described in chapter 17 and in chapter 18. Okay. In chapter 18 that we already looked at, there is a religious system that's called Mystery Babylon. And we'll come back to that in just a moment. And then what we're going to be getting into tonight is the city Babylon that I personally believe is going to be rebuilt. And when that rebuilding of Babylon there in what we know today is being Iraq, yes. uh, there will be an establishment of a political and of a commercial and an economic system that's going to be affecting the entire world in the last days. Hmm. Now, we're going to look at a verse, oddly enough, in the Old Testament to begin our study, and that's in Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 7. I'm so used to the King James, even though I've used the New American Standard for over 40 years now, I still think sometimes in King James because that's how I first started hearing prophecy. <laughs> and in the King James, it says this is the time of Jacob's trouble. And in the New American Standard, I believe it refers to it as Jacob's distress. 
And the reason I'm going there is if you'll look at it, uh, I think Ben now has found it for us in the King James Version. Alas, for that day is great. We're talking about, <clears throat> pardon me, not a 24-hour period of time, but a season, all right? And we know that this period of time is known as the tribulation. And we've already well established, I hope, that it's divided into two different divisions. The first three and a half years, we saw that there are going to be seals that are going to be opened on a scroll of judgments that are going to be poured out. The seventh seal of judgment was a, a trumpet that sounded that announced seven trumpets of judgment. And those were still in conjunction with that first three and a half year period of the tribulation period. I personally believe that the Babylon that's called Mystery Babylon of Revelation chapter 17, it takes place during that first three and a half year period. And the reason I say that is because we saw that there's going to come a beast that we know will be the Antichrist. And he's going to be supported by a religious voice that we know is going to be the false prophet. And they are going to be energized by Satan himself. We're going to look at that in a little more depth. And that false prophet is going to cause, once the temple is rebuilt in Jerusalem, and reconciliation looks like it's on the scene, and peace is taking place between the Jews and the Arabs, that's all going to disintegrate because now the Antichrist is going to say, now you're going to worship me. <laughs> and so that religious Babylon is going to be destroyed. And we saw in Revelation chapter 17, the last time we were together, that it was destroyed by the seven kings that are the restored old Roman Empire. Now, when we typically think of the Roman Empire, we, we think of, of Europe and what's involved there, and certainly it is inclusive of Europe. But let's not forget that the Roman Empire is given to us back in the book of Daniel in a statue that Nebuchadnezzar saw. Remember, and Daniel gave the interpretation of it. We're not going to turn to that now, but that's found back in Daniel starting in chapter 2 through chapter 4, for those of you that want to read it. And, and this statue that he saw, it had a golden head, and then it had the, the bronze chest, and, and then it had the, the, uh, the, the two legs that came down out of it, made of brass, mm -hmm. bronze. Yes. Well, those two legs were the Roman Empire, yes. starting with Nebuchadnezzar, who was the head, okay? And then there was the Medo-Persian, which was the chest with the arms, okay? And then the loins that were there, that became Greece with Alexander the Great. And now the two divisions yes. of the Roman Empire, because it had an Eastern faction with a capital there in Constantinople, and then the, the Western capital of being Rome. So that was depicted by the two legs. And then we saw there was iron and clay that were mixed with the ten toes on that statue. Well, those ten toes are representative of that restored Roman Empire that covers all that eastern and western area hmm. that's going to be revived, all right, under the Antichrist. And the false prophet is going to say now, everyone's going to worship him, and you'll take the mark of the beast, or you're not going to be able to do any kind of monetary exchange. There won't be any way of purchasing food. And people that don't have it will be martyred during that time. And that's the infamous 666 that's going to be on the hands or on the, the forehead. And how that will take place, there's a lot of speculation. But it's not all that unreal to our generation, not son. At all. Now, that all being said, this is the time of Jacob's trouble. And the Babylon we're going to be looking at tonight in this personal study is now going to be this economic, political, financial institution that's going to be established there in Iraq, okay? Now, we personally don't believe that the church 
is going to be going through this time. We believe the church has been raptured, yeah. all right? And I'd like to take just a moment and, and show you a portion of Scripture that may, for those Bible students out there and people who like to uh, maybe get into a little controversy, let's look in 2 Thessalonians at something that I just saw this past week that may be a little different interpretation for us. Paul is writing to the church at Thessalonica, and there was some false teaching that was going on already about the coming of the Lord, because there were, there were some that were trying to say, it's already happened. The Lord's already returned. Yes. Okay? And they were trying to say that there were spirits that were making these kind of revelations known, and there were letters that were going around, and like the letters that were written to the churches, and they were trying to spread around all this false teaching. So Paul writes to the church at Thessalonica in 2 Thessalonians 2, and in verse uh, chapter 2, starting in verse 1, Paul writes and says, Now we request you, brethren, with regard to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him. Now that's important because let's make sure we've got a good foundation. Because remember, the revelation is not the revelation that John received on Patmos of the Antichrist. It's not the revelation of Babylon. Yes. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. Yes. And let's stay focused on that. And so now we're getting clarity about, look what he says in chapter 2, verse 1, the return of Jesus Christ, and his wording is important, and our gathering together to him. Because the return of the Lord has two different divisions to it. Hmm. We know there's going to be what we believe is the very next thing that could happen while we're having this Bible study together, son. That's right. And that is the rapture of the church. That's when we meet the Lord in the air. You can read about that. We're not, we're not going to turn to it now. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And that is the gathering of the people of the Lord. Because the dead in Christ will rise first. And it says in 1 Thessalonians 4, those that are alive and remain will be caught up to meet him. And that's where we get that Latin word, rapturus, will be raptured up to meet him in the air. Now, that's what it says in 2 Thessalonians 2.1. That's the gathering together to him. But we know that after this tribulation period, we're getting ready to see it. As soon as we're going to see this, mis this economic empire of Babylon in chapter 18 destroyed, and it will be destroyed now at the end of the tribulation, Mystery Babylon at the end of the first half. Now, mystery, excuse me, economic Babylon, it's going to be destroyed at the end. And when that is destroyed, that's when the Lord is going to return. And we're going to return with him. So now look at what Paul says. I don't want you to, with regard to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, that's his second coming, and our gathering together to him, that's the rapture, that you not be quickly shaken from your composure, verse 2 says, or be disturbed by, remember I said this, by a spirit or by a message or by a letter as if from us, they were trying to say, hey, this is what Paul's teaching, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Now look very, very carefully at this. Let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come unless the apostasy comes first. Now, a lot of people have taught, and it, it, it could be taught, okay? And that is that there's going to be a great falling away that's going to happen. And that's what my translation said, a falling uh, away. That's what the King James says, I believe, is, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Because that, that's what they, they hold to, and that is that uh, because we're seeing so much lukewarmness and the Laodicean church age, which is the lukewarm church that Jesus said, I wish you were hot or cold, but because you aren't, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. And that was the church that in the last days, if that's how that's going to be interpreted, it says that Jesus is standing outside the church. He's not even inside the church. He's knocking on the door saying, can I come in? <laughs> okay. Well, the, pro the problem with that, which 
if you looked at today the United States, and if we take a look at what we're, we, we just saw with this religious system that's there, there could be every, everyone to believe, uh, lead us to believe, rather, what everyone says, that there's going to be a falling away that's going to take place before the Lord returns. But the problem with that is, did you know that there are great revivals that are taking place in South America? That's right. There's great revivals going on in Singapore and in the Middle East and in the Far East and in China. There are great raising ups of churches and spirit-filled believers that are happening there. So while we're thinking in the United States where there's so much lukewarmness, you and Ben and I were even talking about it before we began videoing, that there are, are so many people that could be coming back to church. Yeah. The restrictions have been lifted. They're being vaccinated. People have been vaccinated. And with all that going on, why aren't we returning? But for some reason, people, maybe they become more comfortable. Yeah. And it would be very easy to go, well, there's going to be a falling away. And I'm not arguing with that. But let me give you maybe something to think about, all right? And hopefully others will join with us. Let's go back because Paul said, I don't want you to get confused about the Lord's return and the gathering together of him. So he's making that distinction about the rapture of the church and the Lord's return. None of that's happened yet. But now look at what he says. Verse 3, let no one in any way deceive you for it will not come unless you see the word apostasy. Yours is falling away. Let me show you what that, and you can look it up if you don't trust me, <laughs> in your uh, Strong's Biblical Concordance, okay? The word that's there translated apostasy, which it can be translated, but it's also translated as to leave, to go away from, or departure. <laughs> Did you get that? Now, perhaps what Paul is saying is, now wait a minute, the Lord's return, which is going to be the end of the ages when we return with him, and now Jesus will once and for all conquer Satan. He's locked up and there'll be the millennial reign. We're getting ahead of ourselves in our study. Those are the chapters that are ahead, uh, ahead of us. We're the, the thousand year reign of Christ where we're here reigning with him on earth while Satan is bound. He'll be released for a little bit so that, that those people that have known nothing about it will be aware of what they have chosen through Jesus Christ. And then Satan will be judged and cast into a lake of fire, and it will all be over with, and the, the eternal reign of Christ, of our reigning with him, will now be the last age. Hmm. Okay? So he says before that can happen, before the Lord can return, and all that take place, here's what has to happen first. Maybe instead of saying a falling away, there has to be a departure first. There has to be a rapture. And the man of lawlessness is then revealed. The Antichrist, after the church, is departed. And the, that son of destruction who opposes and exalts himself of everything that's so-called uh, and our uh, uh, so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God, and then he goes on to explain what's going to happen during the Antichrist. Maybe what Paul was saying, more than a falling away, because there's going to be an innumerable company of people that are saved out of the tribulation. That doesn't sound like a falling away to me. There are going to be people that, look what it says at this place in Mystery Babylon, or excuse me, Religious Babylon, Look at what it says in chapter 18 of Revelation, chapter 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not participate in her sins and receive of her plagues. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. But there are people, even in the midst 
of this horrible time of sinfulness of the religious system that now is fallen and the Antichrist stepping up and saying, worship me, and if you don't take the mark of the beast, I'll annihilate you. You won't be able to eat, won't be able to survive. And he sets up an economic system that's controlling the whole world. Think there will still be enough people that the Lord says, hey, come on out of them. And, and they come out and they're saved in this horrible time of the great tribulation. Thank God. Isn't that amazing? You know, we, we talk about how hard it is to serve the Lord now. <laughs> Think of what these saints are going to be like. Now, let's take a look at some things that help bring the clarity. Look in chapter 18 and we'll go to work. How we know there is a distinction in our understanding between the Babylon of the religious system and the one we're getting into now of the economic system. Look at these simple three words. After these things. Do you see those? Mm -hmm. I want to underline them because those that go, oh, well, it's, not, it's all just runs together. No, it doesn't all run together. He's saying those things took place. And after those things, these things are now going to take place. Okay? Let's go into that just a little bit further. Look in chapter 17 and verse 5. Talking about this harlot who is the mystery Babylon. It says in chapter 17, verse 5, And on her forehead there was a name written, a mystery, Babylon the Great, mother of harlots and of, of the abominations of the earth. Now that's her name, right? Because that's what it just said very clearly. Yeah. A name was written. But let's look over in chapter 18 and look what it says this one is called. And he cried out with a mighty voice saying, and we're going to come back to that, who's, who's saying that? It says it's an angel saying, fallen, fallen is Babylon who? I'm sorry, which verse? Is verse, two. verse 2. Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She's become a dwelling place of demons and a prison of every unclean spirit and a prison of every unclean and hateful bird. Wow, a bunch of dirty birds. <laughs> So now we see the Babylon that we saw over in chapter 17 is the mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. But this one's simply called Babylon the Great that's going to be established. Now, I referred to who was the one that said that declaration. It says, after these things I saw, verse 1 of chapter 18, another angel coming down out of heaven. Now, to look at this angel, we need to look over, if you will, in chapter 19. Because that angel that's bringing this message is going to be referred to, not again, until chapter 19. Okay? And this is after, I'm kind of jumping ahead here, all right, after the destruction now of this Babylon the Great this economic system in the city of Babylon that's affecting the whole planet, Earth, okay? It's going to be destroyed. And I, I hope you can stay with me through all this. I know I'm bouncing around. Am I, am I making this clear so far to you? Clear as mud. Okay, there, well, that helps a lot. Okay, once it's destroyed, we're now going to hear a hallelujah chorus break out. In Revelation 19, and we'll get to that next week, there'll be... Four times in six verses, we're going to hear up in heaven, hallelujah, 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 okay? And that's all taking place. And while that hallelujah chorus, and this was our, our sermon today at our church at Calvary Christian Fellowship, verse 7 says in chapter 19, let us rejoice and be glad and give glory to him for the marriage of the lamb has come. Now that's lamb, that lamb we know is Jesus Christ and his bride who's made herself ready. That's us, the church, okay? Because we've now come through the seven-year tribulation while we've been with him at the judgment seat of Christ and everything's all been taken care of. And now it says it was given to her, the church, to clothe herself in fine linen, bright and clean, for the fine linen are the righteous, uh, is the righteous acts of the saints. And the righteous act that we did as we accepted Christ as our Savior when we did that one act. Think of it, son. 
He who knew no sin became our sin hmm. that we could become the righteousness of God. That's the only righteous act we could ever do. Yes. Now look at what else it says. Then he said to me, now who's that he? Well, that's that angel that came down out of heaven that brought this message. Okay, now look carefully. He said to John, verse 9, chapter 19, Blessed are those, write this down, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper. Now we'll talk about that when we get over to chapter 19. Who are these guests that come to the marriage supper of the Lamb? And he said to me, these are the true words of God. Then I, John, I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, don't do that, for I'm, your fellow, I'm a fellow servant of yours and your brethren who hold the testimony of Jesus. Now, wait a minute. Look what the angel said. This angel said, I am a fellow servant of yours, just like you are. And I'm of your brethren. This is not an angelic being of the spirit world beings that we've talked about before. Mm -hmm. There's every indication. This is out of Dake's Bible, and I, I believe there's scriptural merit to it. It's not a spirit being. It's a human being. Huh. Because angel, you go, oh, angel. And, you know, I know you said that your wife, Erin, was a perfect angel. She's up in the air harping about something you said all the time. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I probably shouldn't have said that to get us, not you in trouble, but to get people's minds distracted from what I'm trying to say. The Greek word angel, simply angelos, means messenger. Yes. I want to digress just for a minute. Because you see, um, over in the Old Testament, there was a guy named Jacob. If Honey Tree were here, we'd maybe get her to pull her guitar out and sing the old song, We are climbing Jacob's ladder. Jacob saw in a dream a ladder. Mm -hmm. And on that ladder, he saw angels ascending and descending. Now, the read that's important is over in John's Gospel, there was a man named Nathaniel, and he was just simply sitting under a tree. And Jesus came along and said, An Israelite, indeed, indeed, whom there's no guile. And Nathaniel said, Hey, because you're saying that about me, you must be somebody special. And Jesus said back to him, Well, if you think that's something, I'll tell you what, you haven't seen anything yet. You're going to see the Son of Man. And now he says, He's that ladder that Jacob saw. You're going to see the Son of Man with angels ascending and descending. Hmm. On me, the Son of Man. And that's what we can do. We can now ascend as messengers of God if we're willing to be. And heaven, that's why we pray the Lord's Prayer that says, Give, uh, we say, Father, have your will on earth as it is in heaven. And we touch heaven to receive a touch of heaven that we as his messengers can be messengers here on earth. And here we're seeing one of those that that takes place. You say, hey, I'm, I'm a fellow servant just like you, John. I'm of the brethren just like you. But I've been sent from heaven to bring a message. I've been up there and I've received something and I'm giving it to you. I believe, son, that when we're doing things like what you're doing on Saturday and the people that meet on Friday in our fellowship, our little tiny church all summer long has made it possible. And, and you said it was on even announced on television. Yes. That's why I was told. That's right. That, that on, on one of our local stations? Yes, a, a credible news source information. Yes. Uh, promoting that our little church was handing out free lunches. And had some people came and said, I saw that on the news. And saw it on the news, and as a result of it, came and got the free lunch. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah, and you know what? Inside those free lunches, where you get a sub sandwich and It's chips a different thing each, each e week. Every, every week, that's a we different meal? amazing peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. People were raving about them. I won't go further than that. But, yes, it's something different, and it's balanced, and it's good. And then we got cold water, too, for these hot summer days. For hot summer days. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm kind of letting something out of the bag. Uh, but what's important is not that we're giving out those meals. Yes. But every time someone gets one of those bags, they're receiving the gospel message. Mm-hmm. And inside the bag, they're receiving an invitation that if they don't have any place else to go, 
they're welcome to come and worship with us and learn more about a, a Jesus that so loved them he gave his only begotten son. That's right. And they can simply receive him by confessing they're a sinner and ask him to become their savior. And if they want to grow in that grace and that knowledge of the Lord, they can find any church that's a Bible-believing set of believers. And that's if they don't right. know where one is, they can come right here to Main Street and join us on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock. Yes. And I believe every one of the people, we're so blessed, Pastor Andrew, you and I, that we have people on Thursday that get up on 7.30 in the morning to get on phone, the phone that's right. and join in with a, 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 a conference, call. conference phone with the ladies praying together and the men praying together for 30 minutes. They don't pray about their own lives, just whatever the needs are in their life. Great they're touching heaven. Then there are people that come to the place where the meals are all being assembled together. And after they are, we come around and anoint them while we put the gospel message inside each one of them and pray over those at 4 o'clock on Friday. Every Friday is anointed and prayed over. And then on Saturday, you take a team of people and they all go and, and get the lunch and hand them out in the middle of all that heat in the middle of the day. You know what I believe they are? I believe they're just like those angels that we look at the book of Revelation and see we're one, not like the spirit beings, because he says, hey, I'm one of your fellow servants. I'm a brother just like you. You can't worship me. You got to worship God alone. Okay. And we can be messengers while we're here on earth. If we'll let a little bit of heaven and the spirit of God touch our life, we can take the gospel message to other people, just like this angel that comes. Now, let's go back, all right? So we're looking a little bit of a contrast because after chapter 17 comes chapter 18. It's brought by an angel, and he's going to announce a different Babylon with different names. And let's look carefully at what it says in chapter 18. Sorry, just to go back with this person that yeah. you're saying. Now, would this be... A person that we would think possibly was raptured? That oh, was... absolutely. It's a person who's been raptured. Okay, so it wasn't a dead in Christ, but it's a, a raptured. Somebody. Well, all we, it, 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 we know it's going to be one that was there that was raptured to be with the Lord. Uh, it it could, could very well be someone that's even saved out of the first part of the, the tribulation period. Who, whoever this is, it's going to be, we know it's not from what it said, every indication. It's not a spirit being. It's not an angelic spirit Not being. angelic in that realm. But it is an angel messenger from heaven coming down to bring it to John. Just and for those that are watching educationally, you know, what we believe that it's a, a pre-trib. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, sorry. Yes. Yes. Now, let's take a look at one more contrast, okay, while we're here. And that is in chapter 17... And in verse 16, when this mystery Babylon, when this religious system fails and is destroyed by those ten kings that are under the control of the Antichrist and the false prophet, okay? Look what it says in chapter 17, verse 16. And the ten horns, which you saw, those are the kings, and the beast, that's the Antichrist, these will hate the harlot, that's religious Babylon, and will make her desolate and naked, and will eat her flesh, and will burn her up with fire. When she's destroyed, there's going to be rejoicing takes place. These ten kings that join in with the Antichrist, okay, yes. and they destroy this religious system that now the Antichrist is going to be established to worship, there's great rejoicing when that Babylon is destroyed. Okay? But look over in chapter 18. Look with me at verse 9. And the kings of the earth, now this is all of them, not just those ten kings that destroyed the system in chapter 17, but the kings of the earth who committed acts of immorality and lived sensually with her will weep and lament over her when they see the smoke of her burning. Look on down, if you will, same chapter. Look what it says in verses 15 and 16. The merchants of these things who became rich from her, this, this political, economic 
financial system, okay? They'll stand at a distance because of fear and of torment, weeping and mourning, saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Not stop like a horse, but woe is in weeping and devastated that the great city that's been rebuilt, she was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. And in one hour, such great wealth has been laid waste. And the end of the verse, chapter 18, verse 17 says, they're all standing at a distance and they're weeping over it. So this is how I personally believe and tried well to establish in this Bible study the difference between chapter 17, the religious system that falls apart yes. and it's destroyed, as we saw, by kings. Mm -hmm. But we're going to find that this kingdom, this establishment, this Babylon, when it's destroyed, is not done by earthly power. It's going to be done by a, an intervention of devastation that's going to take place. There's going to be an earthquake. It's going to divide all of Jerusalem that's going to be established into three different sections when this earthquake takes place. And Babylon will be destroyed. There's going to be a great economic system in chapter 18 that's described. And when this destruction comes, there's going to, remember, there's going to be great merchants that are going to be transporting. And you talked about this in our last study together of what goes through like the Suez Canal, uh, all, all of that merchandise that is handled then, well, this is going to be even more exploited during this time. And there's going to come a giant millstone, okay, out of the sky. Some believe it to be a great asteroid that's going to come and destroy the waters in such a way that there won't be any more sea travel, yeah. okay? And it's going to wipe everything out. And think of it. It's going to be the shortest kingdom and the fastest destruction in the history of any kingdom on earth. Because it says in one day, that's what it said. If you look back with me in chapter 19, or excuse me, chapter 18, and in verse 10, excuse me, verse 8. Ben, would you put up chapter 18 and verse 8? For this reason, in one day, her plagues will come, pestilence and mourning and famine and she'll be burned up with fire for the Lord God is the one who will judge her and he uh, is strong. Now that said, there'll be one day, right? Mm -hmm. Now look what it says in verse 10. They're standing at a distance and at the very end of the verse, it says, for in one hour, your judgment has come. <laughs> one day and in that day, in one hour, God's judgment is going to fall. Now, whether that means it's a literal 24-hour uh, period of a 60-minute hour, or whether it means it's going to be an instantaneous at the end of this three and a half years called the Great Tribulation, the end of this time of Jacob's trouble, and the reason I brought that out is because, you see, there's some confusion, and we'll stop here after this is this is God's dealing with the Jew. The Jewish nation, the Jewish people, who rejected Jesus the first time when he came as the lamb. He's now returning as the lion. Now, there, there is confusion, and that's why it's called the time of Jacob's trouble. This time of Jacob's trouble is given that title because Jacob was the father of 12 sons. Yes. And those became the 12 tribes of Israel yes. that Moses brought out of Egypt. Now, when he brought them out of Egypt, Ben, would you put up Luke chapter 21 and verse 24? Luke 21, verse 24. This is the time when Jesus is talking about this tribulation period that we've been spending so much time on. And he says, and they will fall by the sword and they will be led captive into all the nations and Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot. And here's the phrase I want you to see, son. By the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles 
are fulfilled. Okay? What are the times of the Gentiles? Do you remember that you uh, felt the burden to start adding to our our Facebook, and I think it's available on, it's on Facebook as well, where, where people can get the Pastor Paino preaches? Yes, it's on our YouTube channel, and then we share them onto our Facebook page. Okay. So that's where the origination and, is from. And those are sermons that my father, who's with the Lord now, but while he was on earth, he they're, they're, preached them at Calvary Temple. Yes, they're dated for when the sermon was taught during his ministry time. I know some aren't from Calvary Temple, but that we'll have on there. But yes, they're dated from when you can find out when he actually spoke that. Okay, so they can go on our Facebook if they want to find out more about that or go on YouTube. YouTube. Okay, and that's Pastor Pano Preachers. That's not me or you, Pastor Pano. That's my yes. dad, your grandfather. Yes. And on one of them here just recently, dad gave the explanation of the times of the Gentiles, which began with that statue of Nebuchadnezzar mm -hmm. that we saw. That's right. Okay. And starting with Nebuchadnezzar, the ba that Babylonian in the Old Testament, going all the way through to those ten toes of that statue, those are the times of the Gentiles. That's what Luke refers to, okay? That entire period of time of Gentiles ruling through Babylon and Medo-Persia and Greece yes. and Rome and now the reestablishment of the old Roman Empire that's going to destroy the ten kings, are going to destroy Mystery Babylon, okay? And they're going to see established the city of Babylon and the economic system, okay? This is all the times of the Gentiles. Now watch carefully. Look over in Romans 11 and verse 25. Romans 11 and verse 25. I don't want you to be... I don't want you, brethren, to be uninformed of this mystery so that you will not be wise in your own estimation that a partial hardening has happened to Israel until, now look what it's called, the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. Now, I'll try to tie this all together before we close here in just a few minutes. The times of the Gentiles... That began under Nebuchadnezzar in the Old Testament. It comes all the way through this tribulation period until the return of Christ. During this time, there's been a hardening on the heart, partially, by the Jews. Until this fullness of the Gentiles has come in. Now what does that mean? the fullness of the Gentiles. Well, if you remember, we saw when we, when we looked at these last sets of judgments, remember we saw the seals, then the trumpets, and that seventh trumpet 